Hello, this is Megan Mitchell with Agents of Change Social Work Test Prep. And today I'm here to bring you another one of my social work shorts. And today I'll be covering three practice questions. So I'll be giving some tips on how you can approach practice questions. I'll present the question and then we will together work through the rationale of why that specific question is correct. So here's some advice that I give when working through practice questions. It's very important that you complete practice questions. And I would say it's just as important or more important than studying content. Why that is, this test is a test of application. So you will get some recall questions, but mostly you're going to get questions that are asking you to apply your knowledge of a particular concept. So the more practice questions you can go through, the more exposure you're gonna get and the more repetition of practicing some of these strategies that you will have. I also suggest um, moving more towards completing practice questions the closer you get to test day. So you might see that your, your studying habits start to switch um, or shift a little bit more as you get closer to test day and you might start working on building up that stamina and completing more and more practice questions. When you're reading through a practice question, always read through it two times, especially on test day. And why I say that is when we're in the testing center, our adrenaline is obviously very high. So we might have the tendency to go a little bit faster and we might read through quickly and miss some key information. Every word in the questions matters. So I always say read each question two times through. That second time through, try and pick up any details you might have missed at first glance. There's oftentimes you'll probably be taking practice exams and you're, you'll say to yourself, I missed a word here and that really threw off my answer choice. So you wanna make sure you're reading through each question twice so that you can really pick apart and pick up on every detail the question is asking. Once you have read the question, always mentally ask yourself, what is this question asking? Sometimes there's distractors in the question stem. Sometimes there's information that may not be needed. So always try and synthesize and ask yourself, what is this question asking me to do? Lastly, before you answer, um, I suggest reading all the answer choices. Why that is, is I know sometimes we'll quickly read through and say, I know the answer is A. But if sometimes one word might change an answer. So you wanna make sure that you read all the answer choices before deciding on an answer choice. You just don't wanna overlook everything. So it's kind of just a checks and balances so that you make sure that you're reading all of the answer choices before selecting an answer. Let's go ahead and jump into our first practice question. Okay, practice question number one. A social worker has been asked to assist an elderly client in making a decision about an independent living facility. In the initial interview, the client repeatedly discusses her family and past experiences as a nurse. What is the social worker's most appropriate response to the client? I'll give you a few moments to read that through. And now let's look at our answer choices. A, ignore the client's discussion and redirect her back to the interview. B, continue the discussion of her past experiences. C, refer the client for a psychiatric evaluation. Or D, administer a geriatric evaluation scale. Go ahead and read those answer choices through. In order to answer this, you are going to want to be able to break down the question and pick apart some key details. So when I'm reading this, some, some clues that jump out to me is the age of the client. So we are working with an elderly client that generally usually means about age 65 and above. And this client, is we are there to discuss making the possible move to an independent living facility. Other important things, how long have you known the client? That is huge. This is an initial interview. So this is one of the first encounters we are having with this client. In your interview, the client's discussing her family and past experiences. 
what would be the most appropriate response? If you get a question that asks best or most, what that's suggesting is of these answer choices, there may be a few that might be plausible, but one is going to stick out as being better as an answer option than the others. So I always ask myself, what is this asking? This is asking, I'm meeting with a elderly client in an initial interview. She's discussing other topics. What would be my most appropriate response as the social worker? I also always suggest doing, doing process of elimination when you're answering questions. If you can get it down to two answers, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to choose rather than having a choice of four. So what I would go ahead and immediately take off the board would be C, refer the client for a psychiatric evaluation. There is nothing in this question stem that suggests that that would be a necessary step right now. There's nothing that suggests that there is any sort of mental health crises or anything that would need a further evaluation at this time. So C is out. What I would eliminate next is A, ignore the client's discussion and redirect her back to the interview. This is an initial interview. And remember, when we're first working with the client, we always want to engage them. If we ignore these, this discussion that she's having, we're not meeting the client where they're at. We're not respecting her wishes of what she wants to talk about. And we're not doing a very good job at building rapport. So I would take out A. We don't want to ignore what she is saying. I don't know about you, but if I went to see someone and I was talking about something and they ignored or didn't acknowledge what I was saying, that wouldn't make me feel very good and I wouldn't want to come back. So we've eliminated A and we've eliminated C. What we can also eliminate is D, administer a geriatric evaluation scale. Once again, you always want to ask, what is this question asking me? There's nothing here that gives me the sense that we would need to administer a geriatric evaluation scale right now. Which leads us to our last answer choice, which is B, continue the discussion of her past experiences. Why is B the most appropriate response? Because remember in an initial interview when we're trying to engage clients, we want to build rapport. We want to build trust. We want them to come back to see us again. So we meet the client where they're at and we would continue allowing her to discuss these past experiences to build rapport. And they, we also might be able to gain some more um, information as she discusses these past experiences. So remember, always meet the client where they're at, especially when we're trying to engage them in those first few sessions. So B is the correct answer. Okay, question number two. A social worker in a hospital setting is part of an interdisciplinary team. The team is, to, is preparing to discharge the client. The social worker disagrees with the other team members about the discharge plans. What would be the most appropriate action for the social worker to take? Go ahead and read that through. And let's go ahead and read our answer choices all the way through. A, clearly state their opinion and ask to be removed from the decision-making team. B, contact the patient's family and share your opinion directly. C, focus on the values shared by the team and use conflict resolution strategies to discuss conflicting opinions. Or D, voice your concern and then agree to the majority opinion. So let's take a look here. Where is our setting? We are in a hospital and we're working on an interdisciplinary team. Um, you need to know what an interdisciplinary team is to be able to get a better context of this question. An interdisciplinary team is a very common in hospital settings and it's when people work with different disciplines. So there could be a social worker, a nurse, a doctor, um, nursing staff. In a hospital setting, a lot of times patients work with a lot of different people. So there's different disciplines coming together to meet the needs of this client. So we're in a hospital and we're on this team. Discharge is coming. 
So the team is preparing to discharge this client from the hospital. However, you as the social worker, you don't agree with the discharge plans. What would be the most appropriate action for the social worker to take? So you as the social worker do not agree on this plan with the other team members. What do you do? Let's go ahead and start eliminating some answer choices that we think would not be appropriate or the most appropriate step for us to take. Go ahead and read those answers through one more time. I would start with ones that you can immediately eliminate. B for me is an automatic one that we can throw out. Contact the patient's family and share your opinion directly. First of all, that would break confidentiality to go directly to the patient's family and that's just not the best practice, right? If we disagree, we're not going to go to the patient directly before discussing our concerns with the team themselves. So B is one that we can automatically rule out. There's another one that I would say we can rule out at this point. It would be A, clearly state their opinion and ask to be removed from the decision-making team. While it's important that the social worker states their opinion, we wouldn't automatically ask to be off of that decision-making team because social workers have a very valuable mindset and opinion and clinical skills to bring to the team. So interdisciplinary teams, that's what's so beneficial about them is it brings together multiple disciplines. So we just because we disagree, we would not say we don't want to be on the team anymore. So A is also out. That leads us to C and D. Remember, we're looking for the answer that's the best here, right? The most appropriate. So I would go ahead and eliminate D. Voice your concern and then agree to the majority opinion. You would want to voice your concern, but you would also want to have a discussion in a, some sort of back and forth with the other team members before automatically agreeing to the majority opinion. You might in the end agree, but that's not going to be the best action to take given the information that we have. So D would be out, which leads us to C, focus on the values shared by the team and use conflict resolution strategies to discuss conflicting opinions. This is the best answer and why it is the best answer is because when you can bring differing opinions to the table and use certain strategies and values that are shared by the team, and have a healthy space where you can disagree and discuss these things, that's going to be the best option. Because as with any team, there's not going to probably be agreement in every single decision. But what's important is that you're able to respect one another's position and find ways to discuss those conflicts of opinions. So C, focus on the value shared by the team and use conflict resolution strategies to discuss conflicting opinions is our correct answer for this choice. It just is more all-encompassing and it really allows everyone at the table to be able to respectfully share their opinion. Okay, we have one more question to cover. Question number three. A classroom teacher contacts the school social worker about a six-year-old student who has just transferred from another school. The student comes to school tired, unclean, and unable to concentrate on lessons. What should be the social worker's initial action? Go ahead and read that through. And then let's take a look at our answer choices. A, make a joint report with the teacher to Child Protective Services for neglect. B, encourage the teacher to make a report to Child Protective Services for neglect. C, meet with the parents and the child to obtain more information. Or D, refer the child to the school nurse for a medical exam. So let's take a look and break down this question. What is our role, where is our setting? We are a school social worker, so our setting would be in a school building. And who is our client here? We are um, referred by a teacher um, regarding concerns for a six-year-old student. Why does age matter? Because you want to be thinking about what's appropriate for a child of that age. And also, this is a six-year-old. This is a minor. 
So we definitely want to have that in the back of our heads too. Other information that we are given, classroom teacher has contacted us. This student is new to the school. They've just came from another school. And then the concerns the teacher has are the student is tired, unclean, and unable to concentrate on lessons. And then this question says, what would be the, should be the social worker's initial action? This is asking you, what should the social worker do first? This is a first question. Initial can also mean first in this situation. Go ahead and take a moment to read through those answer choices one more time. You most likely will see some sort of child abuse or neglect potential questions on the exam. If you get a question where you are determining whether you report to Child Protective Services or not, always ask yourself, do I have enough information to report? If you do not have enough information, you probably need to collect a little bit more information. We don't wanna make assumptions, but if you do have enough information, you can report. So here is somewhere a question where we're going to have to determine, do we have enough information to make a report here? What we know is that the student comes to school tired, unclean and unable to concentrate on lessons. Let's start to eliminate some answer choices. Given the information we have here, there is not enough information to make a report to Child Protective Services. There could be a variety of different issues why the school student is coming to school tired, unclean, and unable to concentrate. We don't have enough information to report at this time. So knowing that, what we can eliminate is A, make a joint report with the teacher to Child Protective Services for neglect. Don't have enough information to go ahead and assume that a report is needed at this time. We can also eliminate B, encourage the teacher to make a report to Child Protective Services for neglect. Similarly to answer choice A, not enough information at this point to be able to make a report for neglect. C and D are our final two choices. Meet with the parents and the child to obtain more information or refer the child to the school nurse for a medical exam. Is there anywhere in this question stem that would suggest that there's some sort of medical problem or something that the nurse would need to be involved in? No. There doesn't say the child's having any physical symptoms or anything that would need to be checked out by the nurse. So D would also be out. We're going to eliminate D, which leads us to our final answer choice and the correct answer choice, which is C, meet with the parents and the child to obtain more information. We want to always meet the client where they're at. They've just transferred to the school, and there are some concerns about the um, energy level, the cleanliness, and the ability to concentrate. We'd want to set up a meeting with the parents and the child to get more information. Maybe they are having trouble with housing. Maybe they are having financial trouble. And we would be able to connect them to services. So we always want to make sure that we don't make assumptions. We want to collect more information. And hopefully by doing this, we could obtain more information. But at this point, we do not have enough information to make a report for child neglect. That was our last question. I hope that you found walking through these practice questions helpful. And I always say the more practice questions, the better practice, practice, practice. Um, the more you practice, the easier breaking these down will get. And the more confident you're going to feel in picking out some of these key details that we pointed out today. Um, if you are looking for more study content, I have tons of videos up on my YouTube channel. Um, I also have paid study materials. So they are catered to audiovisual learners. They are similar to my YouTube videos. I um, walk through with a visual PowerPoint. And then also um, I, I have the audio piece as well. I have over 20 hours of recorded content. That would be part of my seven session series for $80. Or I have individual sessions. If you just need help with a particular topic, those are $15.
I'm always updating my content. I'm always finding ways to make it most valuable to my customers. So if you're interested, you can check it out there at Gumroad. Um, and that there will be more information on that if you find that my style is helpful for you. Also, here is my contact information if you ever have any questions or want to follow up on anything. And lastly, I'd like to end by thanking you for taking the time um, to watch my video and let me walk you through some questions today. Um, I commend you wherever you are in the studying process for taking the time to dedicate to you and your journey towards licensure. And remember, this is just one small part of your journey. Um, you got this. Um, remain confident in your abilities. And this is my last social work short of 2020. So I wish you positivity, health and safety in 2021. And I look forward to sharing more content with you next year. Thank you for tuning in.